Well, let's let's pull up the uh, the bigger story in this in this whole whole thing. Uh, shout out to Andrew Kerr of the Washington Examiner investigating this. Black Lives Matter has shut down fundraising days after liberal states threatened legal action. We don't know who's in charge. We don't know where the money is. Apparently, they went to the address that BLM files, and there's nothing there. And the people there are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. There's no BLM here. Yo, it's almost like BLM is a shadow organization that never really existed. So what is it? it? Is it a charity? BLM? Well, it's like, wait, are the, so the people who are encouraging American citizens to burn down their communities are sketchy? This is crazy. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Oh, okay. well, so they start a charity, Black Lives Matter. I imagine it's a 501c3. I'm trying to figure it out. I think it says it is. And then what happened? All these chapters started spawning well, there's, uh, called there's, Black Lives Matter. There's local chapters because anybody can make a local whatever they want. And they're not mm-hmm. charities? But they, yeah, can yeah, also, they probably are. So they might be charities too? Yeah. But it's the, uh, the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. Mm. That's like the official organization. Yo, you've got California saying like, where's the money? And they went, uh... Indiana says it's a scam. The Indiana AG was like, it's a, it, he's like, it's, it's indicative of what scams do. It's I'm looking at and this. And it's a house of cards. There's yeah. the Black Lives Matter Foundation, which is not the Black Lives Matter movement. It's also a foundation of 501c3. December 19th was formed and it's been taking donations. There's an advisory from BuzzFeed. NBC is like, watch out for the Black Lives Matter Foundation because it's not affiliated with the movement. Uh, so there you're starting to see like money grab, fraudulent scams pop up, at least in this instance. Yeah, so this is it right here. I pulled it up. The Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. Former executive director was Patrice Cullors. Everybody knows her because she's that lady who bought all those houses, right? Yeah, three, I think three or four houses. I think she had five. Oh, wow. Yeah, she had five and they were, they, you know, they were, they were up there, huh? And it's a 501c3 and currently it has nonprofit compliance issues. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah, well, they're not disclosing the finances. They're not disclosing the numbers. They're supposed to have public records of what is happening with that money they're preventing people from see it. And, 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 and when journalists are asking about this, the people who were initially asked about this are now trying to conceal their information or c- hide who they are to not even be held accountable for this as the California Department of Justice is literally threatening these leaders saying that they could be held personally liable if they don't disclose the financial records. Let me, let me just read this. Let okay. me just read this for you guys. All right, you, you, you guys ready for this one? Let me build this, a little bit of suspense. From influencewatch.org. Purchase of former Communist Party of Canada headquarters. What? In July 2021, <laughs> the nonprofit M4BJ purchased a 10,000 square foot mansion in downtown Toronto. Did they take the toilets out? To formerly avoid served as the headquarters of the Communist Party of Canada, <laughs> according to the Washington Examiner. The bulk of the 8.1 million uh, purchase price came via a restricted capital grant provided by the BLM Global Network Foundation. Where'd your money go? They took over the Communist Party headquarters in Toronto. (laughs) Well, this is what I find so hilarious. Tim, earlier you were talking about the intelligentsia. And it is true, according to Pew Research, that people who have higher education or have been through higher education are more likely to support BLM. But one thing I find very interesting about that is if this is a movement which is more likely to be supported by really intelligent people, how did none of them figure out that it was such a scam? It's very funny because in this country, probably over the past 100, maybe 150 years, our notion of what education is supposed to be changed. So in the past, it was something that was set aside for a very small minority of people who could handle things like learning Greek and Latin by the time they were 16 years old and who would be completely familiar with the entire Western lexicon and then would go on to higher learning. No, I think it's great that we have widespread literacy and we've increased access to education. But when it comes to higher education, we've just tried to funnel everyone through it, even though the entire model that was created initially was for the particularly and and really highly intelligent. And so what's happened is we've dumbed down higher education to the point where the people who go through it can't even spot that something like this is an unbelievably obvious scam. It's not that they can't spot it. It's that even just basic questioning of the institution and the organization labeled you a racist, labeled you as someone who is intolerant, labeled you as someone who was bigoted when when you didn't support these Marxist ideas, you were, of course, attacked viciously by a lot of powerful organizations and institutions that were just blindly writing checks to these organizations. So that had a huge social factor to it. 
Yeah, no, but... And I would I, even question would, the validity of that study myself, personally. Yeah, so I, I think it's it's both. I mean, you're absolutely right that they're not allowed to question it, but I, I think part of the reason they're not allowed to question it is because higher education no longer has the same message it used to, which is that we should be questioning things, we should be trying to discover new ideas, and this should be reserved for very intelligent people who are actually capable of wrestling with ideas and aren't just going to go along with the group. Yeah. You guys, so that whole Whoopi Goldberg thing was started over the mouse book and to kill a mockingbird getting mm -hmm. removed from the curriculum. The New York Post even claimed Mouse was banned. It's literally it's not, not true. So I've got a couple points to make. This is fun. So I was on Facebook and this lefty guy I know, he like posted, hey, look, they banned Mouse and then linked to a story. And I responded with, they didn't ban it. They just took it off the curriculum. And the response was, that means the school banned it. No. And then I responded with the Gulag Archipelago was also banned. And they all went, whoa, really? And I was like, that's right. <laughs> because it's not in their curriculum. That means yeah. it's banned, isn't it? Yeah. So I saw another post, right? And it's, all, it's this meme going around, many of you may have seen it, where it's a stack of books and all of these banned books, and it's from like Occupy Democrats or something, and it says, kids, listen, if anyone tells you that you don't, that you, you can't read a book, you need to find this book and read it and decide for yourself. My response was, absolutely. We should be sending kids the book rigged by Molly Hemingway yes. so they can learn about the election. And if anyone tells them they shouldn't read it, that's proof they should. Irreversible harm. And, and then well, yeah. it's actually funny because I saw that post. I saw that meme. And one of the books in the meme was like The Joy of Sex. And it's like, yeah, before a certain age, you probably shouldn't be reading that. But they're not banned books. It's No, like, I know. I so know. so they told me, you know, these, these books aren't banned. Are, 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 these, these books are banned. And I was like, when I was a kid, a banned book meant if you brought it to school, they'd take it from you and call your parents. They'd be yes. like, this is inappropriate for kids. You should not be showing this. And usually it was like serious adult stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a banned book. When they're just like, we're not going to make it required reading, but we don't care if you have it. It's in the library if you want to read it. That's that, not banned. That's not banned. No. But this is, uh, how, did we, how did we get into the book thing again? I don't know. You were mentioning. Well, we were just talking about higher education and how it's oh, you right, know, right. totally failed in this country. is that being intelligent and educated doesn't mean that you're moral. Mm. And no, so absolutely. a lot of really intelligent Ooh. people do really immoral things yeah, like the Nazi I hear scientists, you. for instance, but, but maybe BLM as well. I don't know. Well, I, don't I know would, you would consider it. I agree completely, but I also think that's a product of the fact that in some ways we've reclassified what it means to be intelligent. So historically, and I think if you look at like Aquinas or Aristotle, their definition of intelligence was that you were able to see the world for what it was and then act in accordance with it. And now we've changed it to more or less refer to people who have something approximating G, which is what we usually talk about when we're talking about IQ, like their their ability to wrestle with abstractions uh, and notice patterns, their working memory, that kind of thing. And those are all really important and they're strongly correlated with, with economic success. But intelligence in the classical sense also does include a person's ability to behave virtuously because virtue is just acting within reason that uh, rather well, than I, choosing short-term pleasure which is more intelligent i want to think of it like that uh, that bell curve meme of the really dumb yeah. person yes. the mid midwit and then like the smart person mm -hmm. and it's like the really really dumb person understands you know that the, 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 many of them not all of them there's a the dunning kruger effect but they're like you know in when you're smart, you can make things work and you can figure it out. The really, really smart people understand this, but the people in the middle are like, I went to school, therefore I'm smart. Exactly. Uh -huh. That their, their whole the whole basis is we're we're the better men Ugh. because those truckers never graduated college. Exactly. The, the, the non college educated. You know what's really funny? When the left mocks the non college educated working class people because they do dumb things, I'm like, the funny thing is, those truckers, those trades, men and women the people working for the fire department, for the police department, for these other organ organizations have experienced the real world to a to a substantially larger degree than college kids. And they make their decisions and actions based off real life. Yep. And these college graduates have never actually experienced real life. And they live in a bubble where they think they're smarter than everybody, but could not make, they, they, they would never be able to figure out how to make a rudimentary machine. They'd just be like, I don't know, the government should do it for me. And, exactly. and Seamus, just really quick, the system, the education system rewards people who are indoctrinated successfully yep. and are able just to regurgitate and repeat the talking points that are told to them. And this is why Walmart, Goldman Sachs, the CIA, all of them were singing the praises of BLM and their virtues and their Marxist ideas. They were like, this is a great idea. The CIA even went on a tirade promoting Black Panther as some kind of woke ideology, yeah. which is absolutely crazy and mind boggling. So so these are regurgitators and repeaters, yeah. I, I, and I would even question that kind of mark of intelligence myself. No, I, I would agree with you completely. I mean, so the average college uh, 
graduate has an IQ of about 114. So that's, I mean, that's a, a bit above average, but that's by no means exceptional. So to boast, I graduated college as if that's any kind of accomplishment anymore is absolutely ridiculous. And to look down on your average working person who's like likely just as smart as you and certainly has more knowledge of the world than you do is completely ridiculous. I feel uh, ashamed that I went to college. I feel yeah, ashamed no, that I went into that uh, Me too, but I went to And I wasted school. my time. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, 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 wasted your time there, Seamus? No, no, no. Honestly, I I, no, I'm very, I'm actually very, I, I was privileged to be able to go and I'm very glad that I was able to go. But it's true that like to brag about it, to like look down on people because you have a college degree and they don't is absurd because basically anyone can get a college degree nowadays. It's absurd. I still can't don't, spell it. It's absurd. I still you can't write and be, spell and I have a college diploma. It's like right? you don't have to be smart <laughs> you know, to graduate college. No, you, you don't. You just got to fill out, here's, fill here's, out the you dotted have, line and hand in the like, paper 150 and times. And just repeat what exactly. the professor tells yeah. you to repeat. Here's what, here's what I, I just find... I find it kind of sad because I really want to help people succeed. Like when people come to me and they ask me for real advice, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them like, here's the best advice I can give you. You know, there's a bunch of other people who know stuff I don't know. I was on the phone earlier with another big, you know, uh, independent media organization asking them for advice. And uh, I see these people on Twitter and they like to, you know, these people with almost no followers who just complain about the government all day and stuff. And I'm like, I kind of got no problem to complain about, the, complain about the government, just complain about the wrong thing. But they make fun of people for not being college educated. And they specifically come after me for not finishing high school. And I'm just, I, I want to stop and ask them, like, what is the point of your life? Like, mm -hmm. what are your life goals? Do you want to fit in? Do you want to look around the room and say, I've accomplished something? To you, is that having a degree? Because to me, I don't care what you think. I just care about doing cool stuff. You know what I mean? So so as I'm growing up, I never saw the point of how a degree or a diploma would do, would do anything to help me achieve my goals and my dreams. And these people who pursued that are now laden with student loan debt. They want the government to pay it off for them. And they're insulting me for running a su successful business because I didn't finish high school. It's completely backwards. I think they genuinely do not understand what life is. And so they just complain and they're scared and confused. Well, there's a, there's a way that the system coddles kind of comfort and, and makes you adverse to any kind of, uh, you know, things that you have to actually work for. And whether it's just blinding yourself with pleasure or entertainment or video games, the system right now is literally, I believe, priming you to live in a box to be a part of a VR metaverse technological world where you have all your pleasures just delivered right to you. When it comes to actually sacrificing, when it comes to actual hard work, when it comes to actual pain, that those are virtues that are not taught to individuals. They're, 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 in our society, it, it's it's looked upon as something negative, but, it, but it's something that, of course, makes life as amazing and it's worth living for with those things in it. Yeah, I would also say this. When people sort of look down on you for your level of education, even though you have a very successful business, there's something ironic about that because particularly with the purpose of modern education, it's more or less to get people credentialed so that you can predict their future success. So to say like, well, you don't have the predictor of the success that you ended up having is a backwards way of looking at it. I think at this point, and I've talked a lot about it, higher education is basically just, it's put people in this isolated space where they become indoctrinated not necessarily on purpose. I know there's a lot of professors that do try to indoctrinate, obviously. But when you take a bunch of people and put them in an environment where they're not actually going to learn anything meaningful for the most part. I mean, obviously, they might learn about the great works and, and the great quotes. But I mean, can they fix a toilet? Yeah. Can, they, can they repair their car? Can they balance a checkbook? Did they learn fights? A lot of people go to school for things that don't make sense. No, yeah. So, so what happens when you take all of these people, put them in this room, they develop no meaningful skills release them into the world, they're confused why they don't fit into society and they get angry about it. They demand the government change everything for them. But if they did, the system would collapse because these are not the people propping the system up. Mm -hmm. You want to know who's propping the system, system up? Very, very obviously. I know it, it's it almost ad, ad nauseum at this point. Truckers uh -huh. tra transferring the goods, carpenters, tradesmen, contractors, plumbers, electricians. All Like I tell you, man, get any degree in the world you want. You will, you will need a plumber, 
a hundred times more often than you will need someone with a degree in, you know, from a liberal postmodern literature or yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah, like I, I read Marx and I read uh, all of these great works Derrida. about communism. Ooh. I'm like, can you fix my toilet or not, dude? I don't know yeah. what you're talking I'm about. I'm wondering, I'm thinking about the difference between IQ and EQ, that's intelligence quotient and emotional quotient, and mm -hmm. kind of how the idea of intellect is you could probably divide it into both. And I wonder if it's the struggle of the blue collar work that develops EQ, that it's the pain of like having to do something you don't necessarily want to do that you learn like. How to I gotta, deal with I gotta, emotions. EQ is more I gotta stop you right stability. there. No, no, I got to stop you right there. What do you mean you don't want to do? What does that mean? Like it's 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 stressful. Jobs that are stressful. Mm -hmm. What it, A job that is, that is stressful is the job that you don't want to do, and that could be any job in the world. Well, like this job is not stressful to me. I used to chop wood. That was really hard on my body. And that's body. for you. Yeah. And there are a lot of people I know that are like, I could never sit in a seat and talk yeah. about this kind of stuff. I'd be so embarrassed and insecure. I'd rather just chop wood, man. I know, I, I know people who work HVAC who are like, I tried doing other stuff, but this really is where I just feel the most useful. Like when we have a contractor come in here and you get a guy who's like a, just like a regular, you know, uh, laborer, and he doesn't know anything about HDMI cords or 4K or whatever. And then he's like, oh, you got a support problem in your wall. I'm like, please help me because I have no idea how to fix that. <laughs> that's, that's a person who's passionate about their job, who says, I can solve this problem for you. They feel good about their job. Any, anybody can feel good about their job. The issue is we're taking these young people, we're putting them in colleges and telling them to be astronauts and rock stars. Y'all should have watched Fight Club because mm. yeah. Tyler Durden told you right then that's not what, what you're going to be. Learn something meaningful. Mike Rowe says it. I want to push back a little bit. He said, don't follow your passions. Follow What do you say? Follow your talents. No, he yeah. said, don't follow your passion. Let your passion follow you, basically. Take yeah. your passion with you to whatever job I, you're yes. you Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. I think, you know, we have too many people who want to be acknowledged but, you, but it's like they, they want to be on TV. They want to be influencers. They want all the likes. But you could just be a really, really great electrician. Mm -hmm. And then you go and work a job and you're going to have some family and they're going to be like, you are a lifesaver. We yeah. had no idea what the problem was. The, the refrigerator went out. Our food was spoiling. So he, he came in, snapped his fingers and solved all of our problems. Lifesaver. Yeah, just really quick. Don't watch Fight Club if you're in China because the government there just edited yeah, the ending of it. That was but awesome. second of all, uh, you know, life has a lot of ups and downs. It's a crazy ride, but they're trying to incentivize that. It's only going to be up. But again, you can't have the up if you don't have the down. But, but this is why the World Economic Forum, a part of their 2030 pledge for not owning anything, not having any privacy, was also that you'll be happy. This mm -hmm. is what the system uses in order yeah. to incentivize everyone because they make you miserable on purpose. They create the circumstances in your life where you are indebted, unhappy, unsatisfied, and a little worker bee slave for their establishment. And then they're like, but we'll give you all the happiness. Just give us more mm -hmm. of your liberty, more of your freedom, more of your responsibility. Don't you don't have to you don't have to sacrifice and work hard. Those are bad things. And when you teach people not to sacrifice, not to work hard, you literally create little lemmings. You create the perfect slaves that are going to be perfect for the establishment to have as their little peons to do whatever they wanted to do with because then you get rid of personal responsibility and people's internal strength. But let's 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 have an honest conversation about this, right? When you have an ever increasing quality of life, when people today live better than, you know, the richest people 100 years ago, when your dental care is better than Rockefeller's, mm. when your cancer treatment is better than Rockefeller's and all the, you know, the the oil barons and the robber barons or whatever. At a certain point, that kind of increased uh, quality of life, it can't sustain itself. No. So what I think happens is you end up with these, these millennials who were told life will be better than it was, than your, your, the, the life your parents led, your life will be better. Now it's not as good, but it's all relative. You know what I mean? A hundred years ago, if you took a poor person and brought them into the average apartment with clean running water, hot water, air conditioning, and a refrigerator, they'd be like, you must be a billionaire. Like, wow. Or a millionaire because of inflation. It wasn't as high that back then. But they would think you were like a king. It's like, no, no, no. This is just everybody gets it. So what's happening with the global elites is they're trying to take all that away from you so they can trickle it back really slowly. It's the idea that Harry Tubman said, I, uh, Harry Tubman said, I freed many slaves. I would have freed many more if only they knew they were slaves. They take away all of these luxuries from you. Then once you have nothing, they'll make you happy by giving you 0.1% back. And it's it's worse and than just taking away luxuries. It's what they're doing right now. Yeah, well, this is why they talk about population control all the time. Sorry, Ian, you have oh, a point. I, I, don't, I think not only do they re, re, relieve you of your luxuries, but they'll induce suffering and then remove a little bit of suffering and call it happiness. But it's relative. So COVID happens. They destroy everyone's business. They make everybody uncomfortable and angry. People start losing their minds. Crime skyrockets. 
Now they can go, we'll save you. Yeah. And they slowly, Thanks, you know, Starbucks, they Yay. cause the problem, <laughs> make you angry. Once you get used to it, they reduce the problem they cause a little bit and you feel a little bit more relieved. Yeah, you then, see how that works? They call that happiness. That's right. A fleeting moment. And they say, you're happy now, right? You're happy. Well, this is why they've been trying to restrict people's ability to travel, to eat red meat, and to live a life of freedom and personal responsibility. Because when you have that, they have less themselves. And they're utter control freaks. A lot of them are sociopaths. They believe yeah. in this unrealistic idea of population control and population reduction for the betterment of the world, which is absolutely a ridiculous idea that has been That's debunked true. by many different scientists and different studies and different data sets already out there. But they still keep pushing it as if, if it's the norm. And now they're trying to push an agenda where we destroy the family unit, because when we destroy the family unit, there's going to be a lot less people out there, which means a lot more resources for the billionaire class, a lot less for everyone else because I, they're not reproducing. I was kind of thinking that um, with, with the current economic trajectory we're on for globally, with China set to take over, maybe a lot of these elites have just said, you know, wh why resist it? Who cares who's in charge as long as they protect themselves and their assets? And so it kind of feels in many ways that there, this may be good for Americans in the long run, bad in a lot of ways, but good in a lot of ways that we get our freedoms. We, we, we restore, you know, balance in this country, but China does take over and then it asserts, you know, serious authority over the rest of the planet. But I kind of feel like it's possible that trajectory for China's rampant growth is inevitable. And that's why it's like we're kind of just spinning our wheels here. You know, what I, I, mean? I see I don't it differently. Know. I, yeah. Just, just really, quick, I just really wanted to make this point because it, it just brought so many important aspects that I really just want to talk about really quickly. You know, there, there's a reason Henry Kissinger and David Rockefeller opened up China to the rest of the world. There's a reason individuals like Bill Gates and other multinational billionaire corporate entities are the one advising China and propping up China to be as powerful and as prominent as they are right now. And and I think it's it's not what what you said, Tim. The, I see it differently. I see it as the corporate elites trying to bring in the Chinese model into the rest of the world. So we are uh, under a social credit score. We are living like we are in China with the government centralizing, controlling every aspect of our existence. I think that's the end game. I think that's where they're trying to go. And I think COVID was an excuse for them to try to initiate a lot of their programs and initiatives in order to make that happen. Sorry, go ahead, Jamie. You know, I also wouldn't assume that China is together enough to have any real long-term success. Their economy is developing right now. But first of all, they're going to hit a birth dearth. They already have hit a birth dearth because they don't, they don't have... Males? enough women to yeah, well, yeah. incel in in apocalypse yeah exactly. they're gonna have their incel apocalypse they're they're not going to be uh, having children at a proper replacement rate and you've sort of mentioned how that could be grounds for some kind of conquest for them but there's only so far you can go with that i genuinely believe that the more comfortable china becomes the more their citizenry is going to become like our own in many ways and i'm referring specifically to the unfortunate aspects of our citizenry they're not going to be as interested in virtue or self-development or even in family and i think their system's going to rot within and then we on the other hand will likely face some very difficult times. And I think that's going to result in the average person becoming more virtuous. And so there really is cause for hope here. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to watch live, you can check out this channel Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want more unfiltered and uncensored content with all of these guests, go to timcast.com and become a member. All of these guests you know and love in exclusive segments on our website where we are unrestricted in what we talk about, so you'll definitely not want to miss it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all next time.